here we go with the uh, rib cage and pelvis uh, structure. We're going to use the magic sculpt. So this one I happen to have white resin. It's going to be totally covered though. And here's uh, the hardener. Working time 45 minutes to one hour. And then you want to let it cure overnight if you can do something more to it. But uh, I've designated a couple sculpting tools just to magic sculpt because it is kind of its own uh, little beast. So, uh, and you could put wire, you could put some more wire around the rib cage uh, to connect to the torso, same with the pelvis, but I think this should be plenty strong enough. And this is gonna give you something to grip and hold the puppet. So most of the, uh, or a lot of the important movements are gonna be based on the relationship between the pelvis and the, the twist between the pelvis and the shoulders and the, the rib cage area. So. Um, as with most of these epoxies, maybe start with a little less than what you think you need. Um, it's kind of a pain to would overdo it and have more on sometimes on this stuff. There we go. So try and get equal parts. More uh, more hardener, I think, make it uh, stiffen up faster for you, of course. So that should be good enough. And I'll get one of my little um, platforms to set these on top of so just like with the jb weld and anything of that nature you want like a, a little piece of cardboard or some butcher paper or something like that to um, you know set your stuff on i also have the um, foam cut for the skull which uh, this will keep it lighter in movement so Let's go ahead and go for it. So this is the hardener. So I keep the hardener lid with the hardener jar. Should be good for now. I'll just set those to the side. And let's, uh, so yeah, let's do half. So I'll grab half hardener, half uh, magic sculpt. And again, like the steel stick, if this is two part, this one's much easier to see if it's still marbly, but uh, you got to twist and pinch a lot. You really need to mix this stuff up. Uh, we had a lot of errors. Um, you go see a little swirl happening in there. But there's a ton of errors. Uh, a lot of people, I think, didn't watch the videos all the way through. They kind of thought you could skip parts. <laughs> you miss important information if you skip these videos. They're very step by step. So you could turn up the speed, but try not to skip because uh, there's little tidbits that I throw in as we go. So this looks like a pretty good amount. Um, maybe I'll start with the pelvis first. And I have my side view here as well, just to kind of designate uh, as we go. Well, the rib cage is the forward of the beam, the pelvis is forward this way. Right, so just to accentuate that uh, one more time here, let me get to the green. The pelvis region is going to come forward this way, right? And the rib cage is going to come forward this way. And that's what we call the S of the spine. So, uh, wow, that didn't show up on camera at all, did it? The rib cage is going to be here, and the pelvis is going to be here with the bony protrusion there and the bony protrusion there. So, um, mixing this up, and you'll feel a chemical reaction pretty quick, but it's much different than steel stick. Um, we're using this instead of the steel stick for a couple reasons. Uh, first, well, it's uh, not quite as strong as a steel stick, but it is quite strong. And you can sculpt it better. You can actually shape it. And having a 45-minute work time is uh, really helpful. The epoxy sculpt uh, is more for modeling. This is more better. Uh, this is better for detailing so you'll get more detail and more sculpt more uh, set time this one's one to three hours so if you're in a classroom setting working on uh, that we're going to use that for the face and the feet and a few other things here but uh, you don't really want to uh, start with that and then have to take it home you know drive or on the bus or whatever you're doing uh, walking home throw it in a bag so yeah so I don't have the timer on here, but I can feel it warming up in my hands already. But yeah, at least a minute. All right, there we go. And double check my thing there. So I think that's going to be plenty. I might even have 
too much to, but I only mixed half of what I brought out. And let's start off uh, with the back side. So, so break it into balls. I usually like to uh, make sure that whatever I'm working on the two sides is symmetrical in terms of volume. That'll help you not make any goofy mistakes here. So there we go. So we'll do the wing of the pelvis on that side and then over on this side it's quite sticky uh, it becomes uh, i call it i equate it a lot to um sculpting with chewed bubble gum i know kind of gross but it very much is like chewed bubble gum so i take the arms very carefully they're in position so i'm just going to bend them out out of the way for right now and really try and get this little fin so you can see it's much easier to shape than the steel stick and it doesn't smell as bad. It's quite, it's not bad to work with. I've worked with it with no gloves and it washed off later. I maybe wouldn't recommend it. Um, from the side view here, you can see one of that front pelvic bone to come forward some more. So I'm gonna continue that. Again, trying to pinch equal parts um, as I'm going to stick to itself really well. It sticks to other things really well. I'm going to leave this part open for the abdomen so the belly can flex. And let's do a little point down here in the groin region. So it's looking pretty good so far. And then we'll do the back part of the pelvis as well. So that would be up above with the gluteus medius, the upper part. And it's been called the butterfly shape. There's like an upper wing of the butterfly and lower wing. So something to those of you who've done your anatomy and figure drawing might recall talking about the butterfly shape. There we go. Okay, that's coming along okay. And it gets uh, sticky. Um, it, Like I said, it sticks to other things, sticks to itself really well. But it also will start sticking to your gloves. So about halfway through the process, you probably want to take your gloves off and put a fresh pair on. And then this will stick, stiffen on these and you can reuse them. But you don't want it like kind of coming off while you're working. It becomes a bit difficult to work. There we go. And that should be enough to start with. And I, when you do mix it up, it's hard to tell. I did this once. It's hard to tell from the white once you mix it up together, but it doesn't look anything like the hardener. So keep your mixed pieces away from the unmixed magic sculpt because I did that. And man, what a mess. I had to go through literally with a pick and pick all of the um, unmixed compound out of my sculpture. Man, I was threw my whole night off because I had a lot of stuff going on that night. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, what did I do? Um, you can add water to this and it uh, will kind of make it a little bit more pliable. Now, again, I'm, I'm careful not to get it into my arm, right? The shoulder, you want to allow the the scapula and the collarbone as much flex as possible. So um, there we go. And look at it from the side view. Yes, yeah, so it's got to get bigger down towards the bottom, right? That's how the rib cage is. There we go. And then if I'm worried too much about it getting on my drawing, I'll set it over. So I'm on my cutting mat. And there it's starting to stiffen up already. So you want to get it on there so it adheres first. That's uh, pretty important to get that uh, adhesion going. And you want, remember, this part, front part of the sternum is the middle part where the repetition, that's the part that sticks out the most on accident when you're not paying attention to your design. So make sure that there's a forward angle. A lot of the side drawings we did we had a lot of uh, corrections to do there. There we go. And using my tool here and making sure that it's sticking in there nice and good. There we go. It doesn't have to purely be, remember you wanna leave a lot of wire in between. If you want your puppet to bend nicely, leave the, uh, leave the wire in between the pelvis and the rib cage uncovered. You don't want to go, uh, a lot of people were overzealous with that. And I think uh, that's a lesson learned, right? 
I learn a lot doing this process. There's so much goes into so many cool new materials. Though the magic sculpt, I think I read it was made by NASA. I don't know if that's true or not. I read it on the internet, I swear. A little spoon here, so it sticks to the tools as well. Um, it sands right off, but it is, it's it's like the steel stick. It, uh, it really wants to grab onto stuff. Okay, so that is pretty close already. So now what I want to do is mix a little bit more and do the back side of the rib cage. And once you get uh, some of the one part on the other, it can kind of ruin it. So, you know, you could cut it with the tool and make sure you're saving it as you go. But see, you only need a little bit of this. You're just trying to get the rib cage. You want the part that's not going to squish or bend much. So when we build up the foam in between, you want all that gushy area where your innards are to be where the um, flexing happens. Right, so now I'm get this and again, pinch, pinch, pinch. I could feel it stick into my gloves. So maybe after I get the majority of it on there, I'll take my gloves off and just use my tools, right? Because like, like I said, uh, once it starts stiffening up and it, it's not too terrible, it's nothing like the steel stick in terms of gross toxicity, that really hardcore chemical smell. That you get with the steel stick. I can see it's mar still very marbly, so I really gotta don't be lazy with this part, you guys. Like a, at least a minute or two. And I'm pretty, you know, roll, roll, twist, twist. Pretty experienced with this part, but so if you're timing me and it's uh, a little faster than two or three minutes, uh, you know, do two or three minutes still, because I've got a pretty good sense anymore. Like. There it is, I can feel the chemical reaction happening. You can feel it warm up. It kicks in and warms up greater than the heat of your fingers, of your body temperature. You can actually feel the temperature increasing on there. There we go. Okay, it should be pretty good. So let's take some parts off of there and let's uh, build up, make sure it's not sticking to the paper. Let's build up the uh, back of that rib cage right here. And there's a lot of muscles in the, the scapula and whatnot um, that are on the back there, but the back of the rib cage isn't as doesn't protrude quite as much as you might think. So, but we're just kind of sealing it around and making sure that it's uh, attaching to itself, making sure we're keeping that neck clear. Don't get too happy. There's no reason to get it really close to the moving joints. You're just trying to get a good part to grip. The torso so when you go to animate you want to be able to grab the torso and the pelvis and grab them and twist and move and let the armature wire bend while holding the um, rest of the torso and pelvis uh, inert so and yeah if you wanted to have uh, a zombie or if you want this to be part of your visible part of your sculpture then certainly shape it more and we can sculpt on it and carve on it uh, using the Dremel and the other tools, which is also very fun. Okay, grab a little extra piece there. I'm mean, gonna keep myself away from that. <laughs> I'm still traumatized from sticking the unmixed super sculpty into my sculpture. It was like, oh, I couldn't believe I did it. It was so dumb. It really, really dumb when I did that. Um, I think that's all right. Um, I want the butt to move a lot. I'm not going to put too much more there. And maybe we'll put some more here and just kind of fold it over the top. Go and do the same thing. Uh, always try and do equal parts. So you don't want to question whether you got to add or subtract. Play on there. And this armature is pretty strong. It stands up really well by itself already. So, and then you can kind of curve some of the rib cage out some more too. So if you want it to have some volume, you can kind of push. Now water will keep it, make it release. So if I dab this in, I'll get a little tray of water here in a minute and finish shaping that up. But, uh, yeah, there we go. So let's see if they can bring it out some more. 
I really want that bony protrusion to be uh, accurate for both sides. There we go. So I might need to let it set a little bit and then add some on there afterwards. It's not a bad idea. But down like in here, you can see there's like open creases down like around there. So let's get some water and see if we can um, tighten that up a little bit, make sure it's adhered. Okay, so when you're playing with the magic sculpt, what I like to do is get just a little tiny tray of water. And that way, if I just uh, touch my spoon tip of my tool in there, uh, it will release from my tool. And you can kind of smear and push. And I'm pushing that firmly. Just like when we pinch the steel stick, we wanted to get it into the threads. We don't want any uh, obvious release points where the edges. So you kind of smear. And it, it'll get uh, wet and it will kind of smear into the steel stick, and that's what we want. And we kind of slide it and kind of pull and dragging it across so it's gonna kind of really become, uh, it's gonna chemically bond to that steel stick. It's not so much the thickness of it, it's is it chemically bonding to the steel stick. And giving us a nice strong pelvis to shape up and play around with. There it goes on the side. Hope I'm not going off camera. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing here and watch the camera at the same time. Yeah, I can really feel the stickiness on my gloves. I'm ready to take my gloves off. There we go. Yeah, that water works beautifully. Um, but, you know, make sure down in here, make sure it's also sticking in there. I could probably put a little bit more uh, it'll stick to your, it's, you know, it gets gluey, so it'll stick to your paper and whatnot. So I'll just kind of watch out for that. I think I'm going to take my last little bit here and just to make sure this is extra strong, I'm going to just jab it in the center here and make sure that when we grab him by the chest, there is no doubt that it's going to move and be secure. So let me take my gloves off. We'll be right back. Okay, so I got my tiny little tray of water um, and got my drawings here in front of me so I can kind of slice. See, it's uh, very sculptable, but that 45 minute window goes by really fast. So really it's like maybe 20 minutes, I would guess. So we'll see how long. And, and I'm kind of letting it go real time. I'm barely, pa if I'm pausing, it's just like grab a tool or switch camera. So it should be pretty accurate. And uh, there we go. So we can pull, just using, go ahead and use my fingers. I can add a little water. I'm worried about it sticking and I can pull that. There's that bubble gum. You see it gets uh, kind of liquidy in your fingers. Not too gross. I don't mind it. And just like with the steel stick uh, steps, you can weaken it a lot if you play with it too much. So try not to rock it back and forth, like let it adhere and let it kind of sit for a minute. And you can always chisel and make the shape better. Let me check it to the Oh, yeah, it's getting way off. It's like a little, it, it does sag and move and all that good stuff. So I'm kind of. Bring that rib cage back out again. There we go. Nothing perfect. And maybe uh, look at the back of this thing. I had my uh, terry towel cloth handy. I'll wipe this off. You don't want to wipe it on your clothes, I don't think. Okay, I just went and grabbed a little terry towel, shop towel. It's my wipe of choice, so to speak. And uh, yeah, making sure that there's some volume and I'm probably going to add some more to it later, but I'm going to go with, I'm going to need this first layer to adhere well. So I don't want to worry about it shaping perfect. I want to make sure that it's maybe smaller. There it goes. See right in there, there's a gap in between. So we want to really push that Sculpey in there. I'm sorry, uh, Magic Sculpt. 
going to get in that crease and make sure it's really sticking to the torso there it goes and the steel stick should have been most of what is in the threads of your um, armature wire so and i'm going to keep it away from those shoulders make sure the shoulders have maximum flexibility yeah, bring that rib cage back out see it's still really weak you don't want to weaken it too much by rocking it back and forth so that's pretty good i could always uh, use my tools to kind of shape it some more and you'll see what i mean by working with chewed bubble gum it's like sticky like bubble gum so big difference between this and the uh, epoxy sculpt right huge difference um, and the epoxy sculpt actually to be i don't know maybe it's kind of gross but it almost smells like peanut butter to me it's not unpleasant to work with to me but we'll see if each of you might have different reactions to working with it so remember water releases but it also makes a little um, watery solution that oh there it's sticking be careful okay from the front view from the side view i mean okay i could probably add a little more bony protrusion on the front but that's okay i'm not i think that's good um let's get the pelvis i see it pulled up all the ink off the paper so it's very tacky so let's finish off the pelvic girdle and even if it's not perfect we want to make sure it's at least smaller than what we need by a bit Just kind of, I'm kind of dragging the tool and doing like a, a, a drag wipe motion. Make sure that it's all adhered to itself. Yeah, maybe I should put my gloves back on. Let's see here. Here's my wooden tool. I guess. A little water. And you can actually work with this like steel stick. You can actually work with this stuff underwater which is kind of badass because it is a chemical reaction happening that might be true with the epoxy too i don't know but the epoxy definitely um it gets wet it gets a little more gushier like more workable so there you go. i'm just kind of dragging that into the steel stick all the way around a little water drag that in all the way around making sure that wherever it is exposed to the edge where i have an open seam there i want to pull and drag that in to the steel stick there we go a little cup cupping action there and then check it against my side view drawing again the arms are kind of in the way all right. Yeah. Well, from my angle, I can see at least that's going to be just fine. Check it again from the front. Pretty good. Keep the two parts from touching so they don't start chemical reactions. Yeah, it came, looks like it came apart a little bit back here. It might have been when I set it down. Dab, dab, water. And I have uh, built quite a few sculptures with Magic Sculpt. And what I end up doing is um, carving it a lot. Like I, I do a lot of stonework type of techniques with the Magic Sculpt. So I do the Dremel a lot with the burrs, like something you would use for the uh, bronze casting um, and the polishing bits, uh, similar to how I would use the bits for um, doing marble or alabaster or something like that. Yeah, this is getting a little mangled up, that's all right. Okay, so there is my uh, rib cage.
and pelvis and check it to the drawing again. Looks okay. It's starting to stiffen up a bit more, so now I can maybe push this without it dangling and cracking and breaking. There we go. And be careful, wash my hands afterwards. Let me get this stuff on your keyboard and mouse. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Looks good. So I left an open cavity for the ribcage. So when he, if you wanted to have him do V up, do crunches, uh, this guy's going to be pretty nimble. So I might have him do some Spider Man acrobatics. I don't know. Make sure the butt, make sure you got room for the booty. Plenty of room, making me pinch that pelvic girdle back some more. Check your uh, anatomy reference. And again, if you want any of this to show, definitely um, the cyborg or whatever. There's a lot of options for that. Okay, so we'll come back and we're going to maybe uh, finish up a tiny bit on there after it's settled, uh, set in for another 30 minutes or so. And then we're going to glue on the head. And then uh, I'm going to cut the back of the skull as well. And then after that, we at last will um, get to start uh, spraying on the foam and building up the actual body. So, um, probably do the claws. I'm going to do claws on both the um, hands and the feet on the toes too. So we'll get to that. All right. See you in the next video.